Today we're going to show a tapering technique with a large diameter router bit from Infinity, along with a jig at the router table. So let's jump into that technique. The project today is actually a bookcase. It's got four long tapers that we need to cut on the legs. And for that, I suppose you could use a tapering sled, so long as it had adequate length at the table saw. But we've actually elected to use a jig and do that at the router table. So we've got a large diameter flush trimming bit. We'll get that chucked into the router table and show you the setup process. So here's one of Infinity's Mega Flush Trim Router Bits, and it's a 2 plus 2 compression bit, meaning that it has two downcut bits and two upcut bits along with a pair of bearings. Now with this geometry it allows you to get a clean cut on both the top and the bottom uh, so long that your thickness is at least at long, as long as one set of blades. So you, if you have a very thin board you might just get the action of a spiral bit but if your board is centered in the bit or at least as wide as a single set of blades you'll get the compression action for really clean cuts top and bottom. This is the largest version in Infinity's line. This is an inch and a half diameter with a two inch cutting length, half inch shank of course. When I'm installing bits in the router table, I like to do a quick check. I blow things off with compressed air, make sure there's no trapped sawdust in there. And then a quick look to make sure there's no cracks or defects to the collet. This one looks good, so we'll go ahead and get that installed. Not all the way bottomed out, just lift it up slightly. So here's the router jig that we're going to be using. It's got some toggle clamps to hold everything firmly in position. So first thing you want to make sure, of course, is that your bearing rides completely on your jig. And then the second thing I'm looking for, here's the stock thickness we're dealing with. This is inch and a quarter stock. So from that vantage, hopefully you can see what we're going for. You want the separation between the blades to fall somewhere in the middle of the stock. I want down shear happening at the top and up shear happening at the bottom for the cleanest possible cuts there. Looks like with this bit height, we've established that. We'll go ahead and lock in a workpiece and make the cut. So we've got a bandsaw on edge that we'll be cleaning up. Place that against the block, slide it down to the reference block at the top, and we'll start toggle clamping that in place. One more down here. So this is a great little jig because we can establish this entire tapered line. Notice down here that the jig actually extends an inch past the workpiece. That's really important so that the bearing can continue to follow a smooth surface all the way off of the workpiece. That's important for cut quality, but it's also really important for safety. If we flip that around, we're also gonna make use of a second taper cut. There's a little bit of a taper on the lower legs on the inside. And so we've cut a little relief in the jig, and then we've got a nice smooth templated line here. So that'll clean up the bottom of our legs. Another word of caution here, the maximum RPM on these inch and a half diameter bits is 16,000. So that's a, a good notch down from the maximum speed on your router. So take that into consideration when you're setting up your router table. Here we go. So 
So we got a nice smooth cut, even with removing a fairly large amount of material here. Perfectly matches our pattern now. I'm really happy with that long taper. And now we'll flip things around so we can complete that short taper on the inside of the leg here. And in situations where you're deciding, well, should I route downhill or should I do a climb cut? Always choose going standard direction because you don't have to worry about the grain as much because of this advanced compression bit geometry. So you can just move the board from right to left across the router table as you typically would. So we didn't have to worry at all about grain direction on that short taper cut and we got perfectly smooth results. When using large diameter bits at the router table, it's almost like you're converting your router table into a shaper. Just a really smooth action with these large diameter bits. The other thing that's incredible is the nature of the shavings that come off of this bit. They're just the finest, wispiest flakes. I mean, this is white oak and it just feels like lace. It's just that fine. So I think that's an indication of how well and how cleanly these bits cut. Check the description box for information on this exact Infinity Mega Flush Trim bit we were using today, as well as the kits they have available in both the half inch mega flush trim line and the quarter inch mini mega flush trim line. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.